Are you toying with the idea of selling your handmade products online? <laughs> Perhaps you're already selling at craft markets, but you want to move to selling online as well. Or maybe you are starting a handmade business from scratch and you want to start selling online straight away. Or you might actually already be selling your handmade products online and you're just looking for even more online selling options. Regardless, you're wondering what options you can choose from and which might be the best fit for your handmade business. Today's video is about just that. We're going to look at all sorts of online options for your handmade business and talk about the differences between them as well. Ready? Let's dive in. Bonjour, my name is Deb and I'm the founder of Tizit.co, a membership community for makers and handmade shop owners just like your fabulous self. You can learn more about our community Tizit HQ by the link below this video. But for now, let's jump straight into today's conversation, where to sell your handmade products online. When you are looking to sell your handmade products online, <laughs> there are different categories, so to speak, of online selling options. None is really better than the other, but each one has a different specialty that may or may not fit the best with your handmade business. You need to think about what your goal is and also what you have time to maintain. Thinking this through before you choose an online marketplace will save you a ton of headaches down the road. Now let's move on and talk about your options. What I want to do today is give you some examples of each type and explain how they are different from each other. I won't dive into the tiny details about each one or this video will turn into like a very, very long video. But what I want to do is give you the information you need about each kind of marketplace so that you can determine which is the best fit for your business. Let's start with retail handmade marketplaces, which are marketplaces where you sell directly to customers. The two major handmade marketplaces are Etsy and Amazon. They obviously have a huge audience, so lots of potential sales here, but they also have a large amount of sellers, so you have a lot more competition too. This is neither good or bad, just something you need to keep in mind. And if you aren't as familiar with using Amazon for handmade businesses, I have a video you can watch after this one called Should You Be Selling Your Products on Amazon Handmade? I will put the link down below for you. And if you're new to Etsy, I also have a video for that that talks about the pros and cons of having an Etsy shop. Now, if Etsy and Amazon seem to be all everyone is talking about, there are also smaller marketplaces that you can sell your handmade products on. A few examples of smaller handmade marketplaces are IndieCart and Outfire. Both websites allow makers from anywhere on the globe to sell a wide variety of handmade items. Some online marketplaces are more specific to a country. What this means is that they either only allow handmade artists and artisans from that country to sell their products there, or they are much more popular in a specific country than in others. Here are a few examples. If you live in America, one of the top handmade marketplaces is Aftcra, an online marketplace where users can buy and sell handmade American products. Its mission is to support local artisans and artists who live in America. A popular Canadian handmade marketplace is iCraft. iCraft is based in Canada and quite popular there. Although it's quite popular in Canada, it does accept handcrafted goods from sellers around the world. If you live in the UK, take a look at Folksy. Folksy calls itself the UK biggest online craft fair, and it's a marketplace for British artists and handmade craftspeople. In Australia, we have Made It. The Made It marketplace is exclusively for handmade businesses located in Australia and only allows handmade, uh, handmade work, so no mass produced items there. New Zealand also has a handmade marketplace called Felt, which is uh, for artists and craft businesses there, and it also only allows handmade products uh, on, on that marketplace. Now, these are great if you sell products that are mostly targeted at customers in a specific country or if you only want to sell locally or nationally. But if you don't want to use a country-specific marketplace, another option is to use an online marketplace that is specific to the type of goods that you sell. Uncommon goods, for example, is a marketplace that only carries items that are unique either in their look or their purpose. So artists have to submit the items that they would like to sell and then Uncommon Goods reviews the submissions and if yours is deemed a good fit for the website, then you're allowed to sell on it. I personally love this website, so even just to shop around or take a look at what's there, 
go and check it out. It's really, really cool. Society6 is a marketplace for artists and designers. Artists upload their design, which then can be purchased in a variety of formats, such as, you know, prints, phone cases, mugs, clothing, all those stuff. If you're a graphic designer, you'll want to check out Creative Market to sell your illustrations, patterns, graphic design templates, invitation, fonts, or anything in between. If you design patterns, Ravelry and Craftsy are good options. Ravelry is focused on fiber arts, cross shutters, knitters, while Craftsy is for patterns of any kind and also offers how-to classes. The Little Market is a handmade marketplace for home goods that focuses on non-profit and fair trade goods and empowering women artisans. Ethica focuses on organic and natural beauty products, emphasizing responsible sourcing, sustainable production, and fair labor standards. And finally, 10,000 Villages focuses specifically on fair trade jewelry and kitchen wares. I'm sure there are many, many, many more, but this gives you an idea of the variety of smaller handmade marketplaces out there to choose from. Now, if you're interested in selling your products directly to retailers, you could consider using a wholesale handmade marketplace. And what that means is that you won't be selling and shipping to the end consumer, but instead you will sell to retailers who will then sell your products on their website or in their store to their customers. Tridat.io is a wholesaler in Australia uh, for Australian buyers and sellers, and its mission is to help Australian retailers find unique handmade products to sell in their stores. Fair is a global, I say fair, but am I meant to pronounce the E? I don't know. Is it fairy? That doesn't sound right. I'm, I'm just gonna go with fair, but I might totally be mispronouncing this because, well, I'm French. <laughs> so I do that often. <laughs> fair is a global online wholesale marketplace where small business owners and handmade sellers can buy and sell wholesale online. Users can search by country to only see companies that ship from that specific country or geographical region. And so that's it's really handy and really nice to navigate and there's a lot on there. So I really recommend you do check out FAIR. Finally, Global Craft is another wholesaler of handmade products you might want to go and check out. Another great option for selling your handmade products is of course to create your own website. Now, First, I want to talk about specialty store website builders. These websites help makers and artists like yourself build their own website. A popular one is Indie Made, which enables handmade artists to create an artist website with a store, blog, galleries, and all that stuff. And another option is Pattern. Now Pattern though, and that's an important point, is linked to Etsy. So you have to have an Etsy shop to be able to use Pattern as a website builder. So when you use Pattern, you will sell your products both on the Etsy marketplace and also have your own website via the Pattern Builder. Similarly, Store Envy is both a marketplace and a website builder. They have a marketplace, but they also allow you to build your own website separately. So these website builders are handmade maker centric, which means that they are good at designing websites that work well for handmade businesses that want to sell their products and are generally speaking easy to use even if you don't have experience building websites at all. Another option for creating your own website is using non-handmade specific website builders to create your website. This option gives you a lot more control and is what I usually recommend if you're going to have your own website because if you're going to have your own website there are some big advantages to having complete control over it. The most popular website builders here are Shopify and WordPress. If this is an option you're considering, I have a super helpful video that will tell you how to get your site set up, where I discuss the seven things you need to do to set up your craft website. So check it out to see what it entails. There is a learning curve, but I promise it's totally doable, even if you're not super tech savvy and having a Shopify or WordPress site has a lot of advantages and offers the most control really if you're gonna build your own website. The final marketplace option is social media. And I'm going to be honest, this is not something I would really recommend you do, or at least not as your only avenue or as a long-term strategy. It's not as specialized or as reliable as the other options we've talked about today. I will say though that it can be a great way to dip your toe in the water and see if there's interest in the products that you want to sell. The most common options on social media include uh, Facebook pages, Facebook groups, Facebook marketplace, and of course, Instagram. What you need to remember about these options is that they are for selling anything and everything. So you don't have an audience of people who specifically want to buy handmade products on there. Now using these mediums to direct people to your shop is a whole different ball game and can be a great marketing strategy. But in this case, we're talking about 
choosing social media to be your one and only shop, which is a lot of limitations. So selling on social media, yes, but as an add-on to a marketplace or a separate website, not as the only place people can shop your items. Now, after hearing all of these options, you might be thinking, Deb, I can't believe you did not mention this one. So if you had one you'd love to recommend or bummed I forgot to mention, a, sorry, I could not possibly fit them all. And B, please let others know in the comment below. It's always great to support each other by sharing this type of information. Also, if you'd like me to do a deep dive on a specific platform, let me know also in the comments below so that I can do it in the future. And if you're still debating whether you want to sell your products on a major platform or a smaller one, and this video has left you curious and wanting to learn more about Etsy, be sure to check out my pros and cons of Etsy video next. It should be displaying on the screen and it will help you decide whether it's a good fit for your business or not. I'll put the link below as well. Thanks for watching. Check out the links below and until next time, au revoir.